my Scorpio collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your work, career, vocation for what's left of August 2021 and September 2021. I am your reader, Mark Angela Lyons, Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive president of Drawing the Circle Production since 1998, author of Words of Grace from a professional witch now on Kindle, uh, the Archangel of Lyons, Mark Angela Lyons but you can call me Mal. Hey, my Scorps, my fixed water signs, sun, moon, rising, Venus signs. Let's get down to business. 12 card spread. Life purpose reading through uh, the three lenses of power, uh, the three levels of power. It's taught by Carolyn Mace. Looking at your life purpose through work, career, vocations involving eight chakras. Yes, even that one over your head. Uh, for a specific timeline. Uh, it's a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. And there is a link in the description box uh, video on YouTube. Carolyn Mace explaining the three levels of power, work, career, vocation. It's just one of the applications of those three levels. But whatever comes out of my mouth as we go through this reading, that'll explain that as needed. Just trusting in that. That's why the link is in there as well. And if you would like to book me for a private reading, there is also a link in the description box of a video I did about 12, 13 minutes or so of uh, not just how to book a reading uh, with me, but what goes down before, during, and after, what platforms I'm available on at the time of that recording so easy enough uh, to reach me. Other than that, it is a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. These tend to be a little bit longer um, because these are, the, of course, it's about money. It's about how you survive in the world, your creativity, and uh, your, your higher calling, but we'll explain all that as we go, right? Otherwise, both feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath if you will. I will do the same to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace that I can through the pantheons of the divine, because this is about our life purposes and really bringing work, career, and vocation into alignment, congruency, whatever you want to call it. Please take a nice deep breath. All the decks that I read are always in the bottom of the description box. If I did not say that already, four different decks, three cards each here. We go. As I call upon the collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters of life, purpose through work, career, vocation, and the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, please, what are the dominant three eighth chakra archetypes? Uh, three levels of power for the work, career, and vocation of the Scorpio collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, watching this video receiving this reading. Let's start with their work, right? Their survival, their literal level of power, their physical power, what they do with their bodies. But what's the eighth chakra archetype in play there? Uh, what about in their career, personal level of power, heart third, third eye crown, dynamic, the interior world, their passion, their hunger, their thirst, their creative intuition. What's the dominant archetype going on there? and in their vocation, their spiritual calling, their inspiration, their mystical power, their symbolic level of power, the eighth chakra dynamic of the eighth chakra dynamic, third level of power, please, for the Scorpios. They're on the table. You already know what these are. They are in the uh, title of the video. So let's see how brave my Scorps are. <laughs> well, 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 okay. All right, this is a tricky read right off the bat. The exorcist archetype uh, in your work. <laughs> That's going to be fun. <laughs> Beware of pea soup. You're all going to die up there. Uh, the dilettante in your career, which is lovely. And uh, the guide, which if you're going to get it, get it here. Get it in your vocation. This is very, very powerful. Just be careful of this dilettante in uh, connection uh, with the exorcist. Now, the exorcist actually is a divine family archetype, though it need not always express itself uh, that way, similar to the shaman. And the shaman is a tricky word to claim. Uh, nowadays, it's certainly more of the grounded earth divine stuff. Um, but unless you're an indigenous person, <laughs> I'm a witch. Thank you very much. Nobody wants witch unless they're actually a witch. Uh, so let's look at the dynamic here, the shadow to light. Now this can be your archetype, an archetype of somebody else, but even if it is an archetype of somebody else dealing with a shaman in some way, shape or form, uh, it's still your lesson, your alchemy, your soul power being developed from shadow to light, pain to peace, lead to gold. 
the shadow attribute. Fear of facing your own demons. Now, who doesn't have a fear of facing their own demons? Shadow work for a Scorpio is not that out of alignment. I mean, come on, eighth house dynamic, mysticism, the hidden stuff, right? Money, sex, power, all that. So uh, we all have our shadows, we all have uh, the deadly sins, we all have free will, right? So a fear of facing uh, your inner demons, but the light attribute, freeing yourself and others of destructive impulses. Well, how do you do that? Well, you gotta defuse the bomb. <laughs> Shadow work, right? It's going into the underworld. It's doing the shamanic descent. Now, I don't think shamanic descent is, I mean, it's an aspect of the hero's journey, right? Going into the underworld, crossing the river Styx. It belongs to every uh, culture and tradition and every uh, continent has its indigenous shamanism, even the United States, obviously. Uh, but I tend to draw upon mine from the Mediterranean and uh, from the Celtic, because that's my DNA. Um, uh, so, you know, crossing the River Styx, I have a lovely, lovely, lovely castle right inside the gates of uh, <laughs> Hades and Persephone, the, the palace gates, just lovely, right? Right by the Elysian Fields, always summer, tanning's great. <laughs> Uh, let's move on in your career. So this is in your physical world. This is your survival intuition, like lower three chakras. This is the lesson that's being alchemized here for you. Uh, the dilettante, the dilettante is rarely spoken and it's positive. It's sort of like a dabbler, a dabbler dilettante. Uh, and in the shadow attribute, that is certainly the case. Uh, pretension to much deeper knowledge than you actually possess, which never goes well just never, ever, ever goes well. This is a creative family archetype, right? This is the divine family. This is the creative family archetype in the creative level uh, creativity, your creative intuition, heart, third, third eye crown. The light you're shooting for here is delight in the arts without having to be a professional, right? Uh, alerts you to the danger of becoming superficial in your pursuits to activate the creativity of your soul power without having to necessarily be a professional at it. Now that can manifest itself in eight billion different ways. It's not just all about artsy, craftsy, you know, performing arts or, or any of that, but to delight in it, right? That is definitely with an open heart, with a clear mind and with a certain innocence. That might very well be helpful backing up uh, freeing yourself and others of destructive impulses, right? Creation and destruction, interesting on the table. But I think this is where your leverage might be. This is why I recommend to people find out what your sun, moon, rising, Venus signs are and check your other signs with these because each one tends to have uh, a leverage point of the three levels of power. And I'm just getting this as the one, the guide family. I think this one shares both the divine family and the wisdom family. Now the shadow of this is no bargain. Places financial gain and control over imparting spiritual insight, which is why I've kept my price of my readings the same since 1998. $100 an hour spiritual counseling readings, 50 for a half hour, you know, five hour parties, 500, you do the math, keep it simple. Uh, but that's paying my bills, right? That is definitely something I was guided to do. And, and honestly, people tip me all the time because of that. I am a guide. I am certainly a spiritual guide. Definitely lifetime. You can have an archetype of reason, a season or lifetime. I have this pretty much lifetime, if not seasonal. Uh, the light attribute represents the nature of the divine in life and in yourself, which is mystical power that you are being guided, but it is a higher visionary intuition, visionary, creative, survival. Three levels of power, really. Carolyn May is such a genius. She's helped me so much, bless her heart. Never met her. She's one of the few people on planet Earth that still intimidate me. Not that many. She's one of them. I love her. Uh, so putting these two together, then, so an exorcist, a dilettante, and a guide walk into a bar. Let's see what this is about. Next uh, three cards, Daughters of the Moon Tarot. This will be the heart third, third eye dynamic of your work, career, vocation, what your experience is on the inside. So even if court card pops up, right? Even if it's all court cards, it's more talking about zodiacal dynamic. And certainly, if you know your sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, if your moon sign pops up in here, that would make some sense. Please take a nice deep breath. There we go. As I call upon my goddesses of water and the sign of Scorpio, please three cards face down. The internal dynamic, the divine feminine dynamic of the Scorpio collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, watching this video, receiving this reading in their work, career, vocation. Got the exorcist in their work, which just, you know, fear facing demons or just, you know, 
freeing oneself of destructive purposes seems very, very much shadow work going on there. What's going on there? Their heart, their third eye crown, where shadow work is, is at least where the choice, throat chakra, that choice to do the shadow work is indicated here. And destructive impulses can certainly be the deadly sin of wrath and the heart chakra. So what is the guidance, the grace you have for them? And you're being very picky about this card for them in their work. No. Wow. They're being very, very picky. And it's not that humid in here. Their work, career, vocation, August, September, 2021. Yes. There we go. I just want one card in my hand. That's how I know. Feels right. Uh, the dilettante in their career. The heart throat third eye crown dynamic of their heart throat third eye crown career here. The dilettante there really delighting, you know, in that, not pretending, some authenticity there. What's your guidance and grace for them in their career? August, September 2021. You guys really want me to say the date? Every time I will. Uh, the guide then in their vocation really does feel like their dominant level of power here. They can get up in that eighth chakra, right? Really get the truth that they are one with everything. So Buddha asked first time in Pizza Hut, make me one with everything. Uh, and, and not putting a, pl uh, a price on that, or, you know, paying too high a price for that spiritual guidance, maybe to another person there to keep that in stride, but live and let live, fairly take, fairly give. What's going on, heart, third, third eye crown for them in their vocation? Thank you very much. That was much easier. Let's see who you got here. One, two, three, all right, two water cards and a mage arcana, but we might as well start with work. You got the exorcist with the witch. Daughters of the Moon Tarot, this is the magician. And come on, the witch and the shaman. I mean, it's, I, I didn't say this originally, I'm careful of not being canceled or insensitive, um, but Wicca, I don't necessarily Wicca, but, but Western Celtic shamanism is the foundation of what is now considered Wicca, right? So, Every tradition has that, so the witch is the wise one, but the one who facilitates change of their own free will, bringing themselves into alignment, spirit, the eighth chakra, right? And fire, earth, air, water, all the rest of the other chakras underneath it, channeling something through here. So this is a card of creativity in your inner world, in your work. We'll see what the outside is. We'll do that with the next three cards that hit the table. But the feeling on this is one of immense power, and it is spiritual power, and I think the guidance is coming from there, and we'll get there in a minute. In your career, the dilettante, this is this is where the shadow work seems to be going down here. Uh, Four of Cups in this deck, though the key word is sorrow, it can certainly be uh, any sort of a waxing and waning of emotion. Fives are numbers of change, an emotional change inside of you. Um, but the vibe on this certainly might feel like loss of opportunity or um, just not, not getting the emotional uh, satisfaction from this. Now, it is only... Oh, right. This is the Four of Cups. In this deck, they switched the numbers around a little bit. This is the Four of Cups. So, otherwise, this could also be sort of like, well, meh. Right? So, I would say meh too upset. Right? It's a five. It'll pass. Uh, the, the, it is the waxing and the waning of things, the changing of emotion here. We see that certainly more in the fifth, the five of cups in this deck, which is the storm. But this can also be about emotional release, about doing, uh, give, give me the words, that was a lot at once, to feel it, to heal it, right? And to know that after this passes, there is that delight, that clarity. It's like the when you when you cry, when you feel your emotions, and we're talking to a Scorpio here, no one needs to know you are doing this, right? It's the world behind your eyes. But when you do that in prayer, when you do that with the intention to heal, I am the healing of this emotion moving through me here and now. As I heal, may all heal. Uh, your tears become holy water, and it cleanses the third eye. Um, yeah, we'll see what that looks like on the outside. That should make more sense with that in the lower three chakra stuff. But in the guide here, this is what I'm really digging. Now, this is going to play itself out in different ways. you got the two of cups. Uh, sorry, three of cups. Bonding, the name of the card here. But that's what I mean. It feels like there is a relationship that's going on here and uh, connecting you perhaps empathically to someone who may be a spiritual guide. Now, 
majority of my gods ain't in human form, at least not around me, they're not, they know not to. <laughs> Did you dare show up in a full physical manifestation in my living room? What I call getting Gary Renarded disappearance of the universe. Did you dare? Let me at least tidy up first. Tidy you up. Uh, this is a wonderful card, and it feels good. It feels balanced. It really feels like your leverage is in, I would say, um, w with your spiritual, mystical compatriots. We'll see what this looks like in the outside world. We don't have uh, court cards here yet. This is all internal experience of the witch. Sorrow. And remember, that can also be emotional, just like, meh, a little blah, particularly if there are demons that need facing in uh, in the work there. But that Three of Cups bonding, I really do feel like you have an empathic, strong connection with others of like mind in your vocation. Perhaps people you can have right of confession with in confidentiality. Uh, let's keep going. Mythic Tarot. The lower three chakra uh, dynamics here. The outside looking in at you or the inside looking out some aspect of the physical world affecting the lower three chakras. It can be all of that at the same time. Please take a nice deep breath. Mm, as I draw down and draw up. <laughs> Do my gods of water. And the sign of Scorpio, please. Let's talk some money here. What's going on here? Those fears, a lot of people are feeling those demons of lack of fear of that survival. Will we survive? However that plays out for them, please. What's going on here for the Scorpio Collective? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, sign in their work, career, vocation, August, September. 2021, the ones watching this video receiving this reading, they've got the Exorcist in the 8th with their work, the Witch on the Inner Heart, their Third Eye Crown, what's the Lower Three Chakra Dynamic, please, for their career, the Dilettante in their 8th. This is definitely a serious vibe here, people, yet the amount of water cannot be overlooked and that you do have help, you do have connections, just don't know if they're horizontal connections, vertical connections, or both. So with that dilettante, with the Four of Cups in their career, some dissatisfaction, that's probably the best word for that, what's going on there in the outer. And with their vocation, which is certainly, feels like the guiding star calling them through here with that guide in the Eighth Chakra, often called the Star Center. Uh, that Three of Cups bonding on the inner, what's going on in their outer, lower three chakras for their vocation. Okay, well, you've got another major arcana. Your major arcana are all here in the uh, the work. You've got the exorcist. You ready? The witch on the inner death card, Hades. Pluto, Scorpio, energy. Uh, could be you from the outside looking in. One would think so, right? Because of the Scorpio connection, the god of transformation. Remember, he wasn't a murderer. He didn't kill anybody. That's death. Terry Pratchett novels. There's a difference. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh Definitely a transformation going on here. Why wouldn't there be demons to be faced? Uh, destructive impulses, right? Well, and let's look at here. Uh, freeing yourself and others of destructive impulse, and yet destruction is part of the creative process, right? You really want your stomach acids, for example, to destroy the stuff that you're eating so that your body can extract the nutrients from it, right? Break things down. <laughs> but there is no death without rebirth. Uh, no crucifixion without resurrection. No phoenix going to ashes without rising from them. So that inner channeling, that inner alignment, I would definitely look to your heart, third, third eye crown, what we're going to look at now, because you've got the witch there. You have the power to choose what you want to do to face your own demons here in some way and free yourself from uh, some unhealthy toxic stuff there. The dilettante with the four cups on the inner, well, because the five of wands on the outer. Now the five of wands is certainly conflict of desire, right? And in one's career, it can very much be, well, I really want to, but I can't because of this. Oh, please, I would love to be out on the road teaching tarot and everything that I teach to live audiences, recording it and putting it up all over the internet. I would love to be doing this. That's just not how it is right now. So there are some legitimate I want to buts. 
But this could also be competition. This could also be a power dynamic of you really looking up, but I'm not a professional at this, right? It's that dilettante archetype. I just want to enjoy doing this. Why does it have to make a product? Why does it have to be professional? Why does it everything have to be monetized? Could be that could be that this when you bring your heart throat third eye crown your passion right emotional thirst mental hunger the the fire the passion to make the choice to do it um, it it backs you up it brings you into alignment in other words you want all this in alignment every chakra has its voice its say its power uh, to just to to help with the alchemy that you're doing here in your work career vocation, fulfilling your, your where else are you going to feel emotional fulfillment? The heart, third, third eye crown. And right now, I'd say there's some dissatisfaction there, if not out and out disappointment. All right. Uh, this is why I got to say here, this is your leverage. You got the guide in the eighth chakra, your vocation. Like I said, this lovely emotional support. I mean, it's three of cups. It could be more than three people. This could be a networking organization or maybe your circle. You take that as you want to do that, because on the outer, you got the Queen of Wands here. The Leo card. I gotta say, the vibe off this as well feels like you from the outside looking in, that you're sort of taking a leadership position here, but one that is really delighting, and I'm using that word specifically, right, for that dilettante, delighting in your calling here with the connections that you have. I feel like your support are, are in spiritual family of friends, not necessarily those of DNA. I spoke to a, a, a new student today, you know, a free consultation you do, and, and, you know, this person was not raised in a spiritual environment, but a very strict religious one, and I said to her, I understand, but that is more often the rule, not the exception, that sometimes you need an immovable object in order to become the, un, uh, ir the irresistible force. And certainly, Leo, with this guidance coming through you, you are being guided and you are being supported emotionally. Now, if this is what I mean by vertically, it's like if this is you really being supported by your guides, your masters, your teachers. This is eighth chakra vocation stuff. <coughs> There's a bonding there. Really pay attention to the truth of your heart. It's going to light up that four of cups and show you something to bring you into alignment. Maybe even aligning your career with your work. So you start getting more paid for what you love doing or that's fueling it somehow. But with this Queen of Wands, the Leo card, it's fifth house, creativity and good fortune. There's ideas coming in here, hot ideas. Now ideas are a dime a dozen. Inspiration is cheap. It's what you do with it. Work. <laughs> Last three cards down. It's a very powerful read. Ah, but your Scorpios, what do we expect? Uh, the Matt Kahn Healing Mantra Deck, not going to read from the bookie book on these because there are three of them and these readings are long enough as they are and I think pretty uh, jam-packed for the Scorpios at least. So uh, let's ask the Ascended Masters of Life Purpose through work, career, and vocation what your perfect healing mantras are to help you bring this into alignment. Here is in my face. Please take a nice deep breath. I suspect the humidity quotient is starting to rise. The bar barometric pressure. That's a hard barometric pressure. Good BJ word. Breathe. I mean, shopping at BJ's, of course. As I call upon my ascended masters of life purpose. Hey, he wrote me in with the sense of humor, please. Three cards in clarity for the Scorpio Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs watching this video, receiving this reading. What are their perfect healing mantras for them, August, September 2021, in terms of their life purposes fulfilled through work, career, and vocation? In their work, they got the Exorcist in the Eighth, the Witch on the Inner, Death on the Outer, which you got for that, I ain't going to look. <laughs> I don't want to see until they're all on the table. Uh, in their career, they have got the Dilettante. Uh, in the eighth, four cups on the inner uh, sadness, sure, but dissatisfaction, dis dis disappointment with that. Five of wands on the outer, Jason and the Argonauts fighting the dragon to get the golden fleece, but it's actually, he has a little help on that, I believe, from Medea, who puts the dragon to sleep. A little bit different there. A little bit uh, different take on that myth once you know the actual myth, so please. What is their perfect healing mantra for their career? Heart, third, third, eye, crown dynamic. And in their vocation, they have got the guide in the A, three of cups on the inner bonding. Feels very warm, very, very 
supportive and loving. They're at least friendly with that Queen of Wands on the outer. Maybe they're dealing with someone who's a spiritual guide, the very, very strong emotional bond there who happens to have that Leo dynamic regardless of planetary placement. Fixed fire. Um, but can be extremely charismatic. Card of the, the sign of the sun. What's their perfect healing mantra to help them with this? This August, September 2021. Takes a while for the prayer to come out. Okay. Okay. Ah, my favorite card in the deck. All right. This is definitely your leverage. We'll get there. Okay. You'll love this. Uh, the Exorcist in your work. Eighth Chakra. The Witch. The Death card. Soothing impatience. There's nothing to do but wait. And that's the mantra. There's nothing to do but wait. It's not to stop you from being impatient. It's to soothe. Your impatience is going to take time. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. And time is in the literal physical world that way very, very much. But the work that you are doing, I would say spiritually, is having a direct effect. But shadow work is certainly indicated here. And that shadow work would certainly show up in the heart, third, third eye crown, the career dynamic here, dilettante in the eighth, four cups, sorrow, dissatisfaction, uh, disappointment on the inner, the battle, the five of, of wands on the outer, but cultivating courage. In any given moment, I always know exactly what to do. These two mantras so far do a lot to help me get my work and career together because there's a lot of details. In, every given, in any given moment, I always know exactly what to do, but I have to remember that and take the deep breath. And what? There's nothing to do but wait sometimes. Yeah, like uh, my Vimeo on demand stuff. I'm, I'm dropping the prices for everything because some of them are like from four or five years ago. It's like, I want to do new stuff. I'm not there yet. I can relate to that. Nothing to do but wait on that. But in the meantime, when things are delayed and the laptop is slow, it's like, it gets a little frustrating now. I'm sure this Five of Wands is more than just a slow uh, Wi-Fi connection for you here. But if you can enjoy it, right, delight in the creativity of this just by going with that. In any given moment, I always know exactly what to do because that is how you cultivate courage, cultivate like a culture, right? Like um, too many icky images just came to sourdough bread. There we go. Right? Letting the yeast rise, right? To cultivate th that, to let it grow, to let it uh, expand, right? Even cultivating a garden. Neat. All right, this is the one. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Last card down. They say the best for last. You know which one it is if you know me. You got the guide in the eighth in your vocation with this yummy emotional bond. Again, it's this way, this way, probably both. But dealing with that Leo energy, they're looking at you as this charismatic, bright, following your calling, following your vocation in any given moment, knowing exactly what to do. Inviting ecstasy. I am worthy of all the pleasure my heart desires. It's my favorite. It is my favorite one because it's inviting ecstasy. It's not manifesting ecstasy right now. It's saying, I am worthy of all the pleasure my heart desires. And with that Leo card, Leo is the sign of pleasure. Fifth house dynamics going on there in your outer world. I don't know. I feel like this could have a little bit of a vibe here saying that there is a very, very strong, friendly, ecstatic connection with a guide. Either you as the guide archetype, you experiencing a guide archetype in the physical and the non-physical, but I gotta say, with this Leo on the outside, invited in. Now, just before I sum all this up, there is some wisdom here that I have found, and I do this with my own readings, and I have a bunch of mantra cards. First, I look at the names of the mantras, and it gives me a whole other level. Soothing impatience, cultivating courage, and inviting ecstasy. Right? So not a lot of external action here so much. This all feels like in the physical world, death and the witch, and freeing yourself to destructive, but giving, and maybe your impatience is what gets you a little on the destructive side. I get it. I get it. I want to toss the laptop through the, the window, but I don't. Um, and, and in your career, cultivating courage to, to follow your heart, follow your truth, which right now you need to kind of more enjoy the process, not worry so much about product, right? Don't worry about so much about being a professional. Light, light up your heart here because the pleasure is coming from you following uh, your, your vocation, inviting ecstasy. So now you put 
the mantras together. There's nothing to do but wait. In any given moment, I always know exactly what to do, and, to do, and I am worthy of all the pleasure my heart desires. By the way, the heart and courage being connected. And courage. Leo, please take a nice deep breath. That was a lot. Oh, you should see the prayers and meditations I do before I get recorded, really seriously. <coughs> yeah. Someone might need to cough something up here for sure. I, I, I was feeling it brewing. I was like, is this me or is this the reading? I think it's both. I call upon my pantheons of the divine to please bless the Scorpio Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs watching this video, receiving this reading, and even those that aren't, with all that they need in their work, career, vocation, that they may free themselves and others of destructive impulses, bringing themselves into creative alignment of their own free will as the witch within as things transform as a result and because of that knowing that there is nothing to do but wait while they soothe their impatience as the dilettante in their career delighting in the arts without having to be a professional alerting them to the danger of becoming superficial in their pursuits while they're feeling perhaps a little blah a little dissatisfied, a little disappointed uh, in their careers emotionally right now because of some conflict going on in the physical world, which can have anything to do with just what the world is going through right now here in the physical world, or perhaps their own, I want to, but I can't. I want to, but one foot on the gas, one foot on the brake, but that they are cultivating courage here if they could know that in any given moment, they always know exactly what to do because they are getting the guidance that they need in the eighth chakra dynamic of their mystical power, their, uh, their, their third level of power, their visionary intuition with some great, loving, warm, supportive, emotional connection here in some way, shape, or form that feels really lovely, very charismatic. That word keeps coming back. Very charismatic around here, the sun with other bodies uh, in orbit around it while they invite ecstasy, understanding that they are worthy of all the pleasure their hearts desire so they can delight in the arts and free themselves and others of destructive impulses for their well-being, for the fulfillment of their life purpose in their work, career, vocation, and as a blessing to all of life on planet Earth and beyond. So motivated. <laughs> so it is. There it is. I think I give you everything possible in that blessing there. So if you liked it, like it. You want more, subscribe. You want to read my book, go ahead. You want to book me for reading? Links in the description box, my beloved eighth housers. Enjoy this. And if you want to reach out, work career vocation readings. Just did one the other day. I do them all the time for people. Although I am known as a true love witch, and the true love reads are coming up right after this series. Uh, then uh, uh, certainly reach out. I'm glad to help with that as well. Otherwise, wishing you all the very best and the very blessed in your work, career, vocation. What's left of August and into September 2021. 20, Check the months before if you like. Hail, farewell, and blessed, blessed be.